Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And what I want to do today was I wanted to go through a little bit of the project of preparation for using the emergency space blanket for training purposes and for setting up your cordage management system with your 100 foot hank of paracord. When you come to the class, you'll have one of these emergency space blankets, whether it's a Pathfinder brand or some other brand. And it doesn't matter what brand it is, I've seen them all fail at the school. And they fail mainly because you're using them over and over again, not necessarily because they're just a failure waiting to happen. But if you're going to be jerking on these things a lot, and you're going to be using them multiple days over and over or multiple times in a single day to build shelters, jerking them one way and then the other, sooner or later, you're going to either tear a grommet out or rip a seam on this blanket. So one of the things that we do as part of our 10 C's carrying our duct tape in our kit is we prepare this tarp to make it stronger structurally by using duct tape. And then we add our cordage management system to this so that you have a robust training tool. And then when you have this space blanket in your kit, it will work for you in an emergency. So these are things that I would suggest you do to a space blanket, even before you take it out and possibly have to use it in an emergency scenario. But this is something that we definitely do here at the school before we use them time and again for training. So we're going to walk through some of that today with you, as well as part of our cordage management system. So stay with me, guys. Okay, now along with this space blanket and reinforcing the blanket, we need to also talk about the cordage management system that we use here at the Pathfinder School when we're teaching basic classes, because I think it will work well for you. For me, the paracord that I carry, the 100 foot hank, which we'll talk about division of that in a few minutes, is my non-expendable cordage. I wanna make sure that anything I do with that cordage, I can retrieve it very, very easily. My bank line, my number 36 bank line, is my expendable cordage. If I've gotta tie a quick arbor knot to lash something together, or if I need a quick piece of string or a spare boot lace real fast, any of that kind of stuff, that bank line is used for, and it's use it and toss it. So if I'm gonna tie a knot in that thing, like a crank down arbor knot, and I'm gonna put a stop knot in it so it's not coming undone, or a clove hitch I'm gonna crank down on hard and put a stop knot in so it's not coming undone, and I'm gonna to have to cut it to get it off, that's the job of my bank line. Everything else, shelter-wise and camp implement-wise, I will use these divisions of my paracord for. So let's talk about that real quick. We're going to take a 100-foot piece of paracord, or a hank that you buy, anywhere online, you've got 100 feet. From that 100 feet, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna chop 30 feet of that off, and that's going to be your rapid deployment ridge line. Lots of videos from all my instructors on how to construct that and use it. We teach it here at the school. We've been teaching at school for eight years where it was developed. That rapid deployment ridge line system was developed here at the Pathfinder School. All of my instructors are very familiar with it. They've all used it, and they've all got videos on it out there on YouTube, so you can check it out rapid deployment ridge line. That's going to be a permanent asset to you. That's got a couple other pieces of cordage attached to it, certain knots in it, a bowling stop knot, two prussics, and it's done. We're gonna develop that 30 foot piece and hank that up with our shelter kit. We're then going to cut 11 six foot pieces of that paracord. So we're up to 96 feet of paracord that we've used. Those 11 pieces are going to be divided within your kit. Eight of them will go with your shelter kit, two of them in the top of your pack, and one of them in your pocket at all times for lots of different things that we teach during our classes. But just a quick overview, the two in the top of your pack can be used for hanging your pack from a tree, lashing a saw to a limb or to a pole if you need an extension, carrying your ax around, bundling up kindling, strapping a knife around outerwear instead of taking off your belt and doing it. There's lots and lots of things you can use that for. Making a quick improvised tripod and camp to hang a pot over the fire. Lots of stuff you can use those six foot pieces for. The importance is when you grab it, you know exactly what it is and how long it is because it's got the same bowling knot, the same double overhand stop knot in every single piece of cord that you have. It has those same two knots, one on each end, including your 30 foot ridge line. There's no confusion there, okay? The other pieces that are in your kit, your shelter kit, four of them are attached to your tarp all the time. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then four of those pieces are attached to your tarp. We talked about that during the tarp segment. And four of them are loose in your shelter kit to be additions to your guy lines 
if needed. Now, that leaves you with a four foot piece. Take that four foot piece, cut it in half, gives you two two foot pieces, and you can make soft shackles out of those two pieces. I have videos on that on my channel. You can go check it out. They're basically replacements for carabiners that are made with paracord. They're very strong. You can use them for lots and lots of things. So when you're done with this cordage kit, you have a roll of expendable cordage in your one pound or 100 foot of bank line, whichever you choose to carry. And then you have your 100 foot hank of paracord divided into nice convenient pieces that you can extend if you need to very, very easily by the connections that we talked about. And you have a ridge line that's permanent. You have guy lines on your tarp that are permanent and you have extensions for those if you need them. And you have two soft shackles as well. And you can do almost anything you wanna do in camp with one of those pieces of cordage that you already know exactly what it is when you grab it from the pack because of either where it is or what it feels like because they're all the same except the ridge line and the two soft shackles. Now, because we use these space blankets quite a bit in training out here at the Pathfinder School, I have seen over the course of the last 10 years how these space blankets tend to fail. And most of the time, they'll either tear out this grommet, they'll tear out this seam that connects it to the tarp, or they'll tear out this seam here that runs along the length and width of the tarp. Very seldom does the tarp itself rip. It's somewhere there's a reinforcing seam that the tarp gets torn. So that's what we want to reinforce with duct tape. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reinforce all four of these corners all the way up past where the sewing is on both sides. And then we're going to pierce that to put cordage in it. Then we're going to reinforce the seam along the length and the width with duct tape as well. Again, above where the holes are punched in this thin fabric to sew this hem seam on there. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna reinforce this seam, this seam and the grommet, okay? This seam will get reinforced when we reinforce these lengths and width seams. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to take a piece of duct tape that's long enough to double over, cover the grommet on one side completely with a little bit of overlap, fold it over and cover the other side of that grommet completely with some overlap, just like this. That's going to protect that grommet and we can punch the hole out after the fact. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a piece that's long enough to go half over the top of the seam and half over the space blanket, just like this. There's our seam over the space blanket and we'll wrap those around this back side because they'll get covered later anyway when we put our length and width wise seams on. And we'll do the same thing on the back side. So we'll flip it over. We'll come in here halfway above the seam and we'll touch that piece of tape that's covering the grommet, just like this, and we'll fold it over. And now our grommet's reinforced, our seam is reinforced on every corner, so we're not gonna be pulling those out. If you wanna be fancy and trim this off with your knife, you can do that, but it's not necessary. Now we have the advantage here of a plastic table. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this duct tape and start right here at the corner and overlap it half on the seam and half onto the table and go all the way along this blanket on the table just like this. Keeping that as straight as we can keep it. And once we've taken this all the way to the other end, we're just going to lift this up and we're going to fold this straight over, just like this on top, to cover that seam completely. Now the seam is reinforced on both sides, above and below the seam. Okay, now that we have covered that with tape, we can just take our knife here, poke it through to make an X in there to make a cross hole in that. And now we're going to attach a cord to this semi-permanently, which is one of our utility lines. And so we cut these six foot-ish utility lines and we cut 11 of them. We'll talk more about that in a minute over here on the whiteboard. 
but all of these lines are going to be tied exactly the same. One end of them is going to have a double overhand stop knot. So we're just going to tie, just like we were tying an overhand knot, except we're gonna go back through that one more time, just like this. And then we're going to cinch it down. And all that's gonna do is add bulk to the end of our line. And it's a little bit more to try to pull through something or have to pull through something if you're trying to yank a stop knot out. So it gives you just a little bit more bulk with a double than a single. The other side of that line is going to have a bowling knot. And this bowling loop needs to be large enough when we're done with it that it can pass through this tarp in Lark's head fashion, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, and give us a loop for a stake loop. All right, if we want to stake directly to the tarp or next to the tarp. So we're going to create this loop, this bowling loop, and we want to make sure that it's large enough again that we can double it over through the tarp and still have some left over. So just kind of gauge that by eye. That's probably a little bigger than it needs to be. So I'll just pull that out and choke up just a little bit on the cordage with my overhand loop. Come through the loop around the back side of the line and then back through and pull that tight to where I've got a loop about the length of my finger or close to it. And that should give me what I need. And now I'm gonna tighten that bowl and knot down. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna pass that bowl and knot through where I pierced that hole with my knife, just like this, and grab it. And then I'm going to come around and pull, like I said, a lark set in that, which just means I'm gonna pull all the line through the loop that I passed through there. And then I'm gonna cinch it down pretty tight. And when I cinch that down, what it's gonna give me essentially is a loop here that I can put a stake into if I wanna stake this tarp close to the ground. The rest of this line is guy line in case I need to make a fly, in case I need to tie this thing out to a tree to give myself a little bit of distance between the ground and the tarp for convective airflow. And if I need to add a line to this, that's why we cut 11 of these. So we have four of these permanently connected to our tarp. Again, we can either stake it right at the tarp or we can stake it away from the tarp with a simple Marlin spike hitch connection by just turning a, line, a loop up the line and then taking that up the line and putting our stake in there. Now when we pull that down to the ground, it will hold tight and we can stake that anywhere we want to, but when we pull it out, there's no knot just like there's no knot here if we stake it out right at the tarp. That's what we're trying to avoid is tying a bunch of knots after the fact when we need this stuff done quickly. Now, if this line's not long enough and we need a longer line for something like a fly or if we need a longer line to guide this thing out to a tree or a tree branch, then we take one of our other lines and we can add it to this by loop to toggle connection or by using some type of knot that's quick and easy. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so if we decide this line's not long enough and we need to extend it, all we need to do is take the end of that line again and put our Marlin spike hitch in there and drop a toggle into it, just like this. And we can use that on the other end of one of our lines, that's extra, as a toggle to loop connection to extend the length of that line very, very easily. And again, when we're done, it's as simple as pulling the toggle out, everything comes undone. So we have four of these connected to the tarp in this exact fashion. And then we have four of them that are extra in our bag with our emergency shelter that are extension lines if we need them. Now, if we didn't have a toggle or we didn't want to do a toggle to loop connection, we could also just use a simple sheet bend by pushing us up through the loop, coming around and back down through the loop and create a sheet bend connection right there. Sheet bends generally work better on ropes that are two different diameters, but for this application, it will work fine. And you can pull on that thing pretty tight and still pretty much just push it apart because it is a bend, it's not really a knot. So those are a couple ways that you can extend the length of these lines using this other line. Now, we have our 30-foot ridge line that's set up as a rapid deployment ridge line. There's lots of videos on this system. Every instructor I have at the Pathfinder School has put up a video on this system. We've been teaching it here at the school for probably eight or nine years we've used this system. So this system works really well. So you got one 30-foot piece of cordage. And then you have 11 pieces that are all exactly the same length with exactly the same knots 
This is set up permanently with a bowlin, two prussic loops, and a stop knot. So everything is set up in fashion that when you grab it, you know what it is. You know this isn't six feet long. So when you grab this out of the bag, you know that's your ridge line. Every other piece that's in the bag that's extra would be hanked up into a small hank like this in your six foot lines. And then your tarp lines would be wrapped around the tarp in the end. So the way this system works, obviously this is gonna be easily discernible from this. You're gonna have four of these in the kit along with four permanently attached, which gives you the eight. Number nine, 10, and 11 go different places. Two of them go in the top of your pack. One of them goes in your pocket all the time. The two in your pack are utility cords to be used around camp for hanging your pack from a tree, making a quick tripod, carrying an ax, uh, lashing a saw to a stick to give you an extended reach with that saw up into a tree to cut a dead limb. Lots and lots of things for the six foot cordage to be used for, as well as spare boot laces and belt around your outerwear to hang your knife off of to get it outside the outerwear. All those types of things. And this emergency one stays in your pocket all the time for drop dead emergency use. And that gives you 11. You have four foot left after that. And you can make soft shackles with those two pieces, cutting that four foot into two two foot sections, make soft shackles out of those two foot sections. And you have improvised carabiners with paracord that you can use on and around your pack and in camp as well. And that takes up your 100 feet of cordage, very neat and tidy. All of this really comes down to what I call the simplicity of survival system that we teach here at the Pathfinder School called the five by five system. My book coming out Father's Day of this year is based on that five by five teaching system to show you how we teach here at the Pathfinder School and talk about that step by step. But this cordage management system is part of that five by five system. And everything that we do here is based on simplicity, repeatability and reproducibility so that it becomes muscle memory, and you don't have to think about it when you do it. That's the key to everything. When it's an emergency and you don't want to think in 40 directions, you shouldn't have to. If you build muscle memory and you make it a habit, then it's very easy to master. That's what we teach here at the Pathfinder School. So this cordage management system is part of that. I encourage you to take a look at it, see if it works for your system. It's what we used to teach here all the time in every basic class, and it works great for us. Reinforcing that space blanket is just an insurance policy. You're using, you know, 20 feet of duct tape to reinforce a space blanket that costs $20. So now you got $22 in or $23 with the paracord and you've got a shelter system that's not going to get destroyed on you in a high wind or if you use it over and over again or if you take it out to practice with it to build multiple shelters over multiple days like we do here at classes at the school. Guys, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.